Okay. Well, good morning once again, and welcome to our Mid Cape Worship Center early morning Bible study. It's Sunday morning, May 5th. I'm sorry, May 7th. And uh, we are in the process of studying uh, the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. We're now at the chapter 12. And um, we're going to, uh, let me just say a, a word about Pastor Matt is uh, on, feeling under the weather. He's, he's uh, dealing with some significant health issues, as you probably know already. Uh, and uh, his prayers, of course, your prayers for him would be greatly appreciated. Uh, so he may join us um, if he's up to it uh, during the uh, study session. We'll see. But <laughs> most important for him is his rest. <laughs> so that's what I'm counting on him doing. Uh, anyway, um, Father, we ask your blessing upon our study that uh, we may get from it what you would have us have and to be able to apply what, uh, what you give to us that we may live better lives to your glory in Yeshua's name. Okay, so here we go. Uh, ampl I'm gonna start with the Amplified Bible today. First Corinthians 12, verse one, okay. Now about spiritual gifts, the special endowments given by the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed, okay? Uh, you know that when you, uh, just a word on that. Let's say, um, okay, so we're dealing with spiritual gifts per se, okay? Uh, we might, th sometimes the question comes up, what's the difference between a gift and a talent? Aren't they both uh, from God? And you can certainly uh, make the case uh, I tend to think of, for what it's worth, uh, spiritual talents as something that uh, more like what you're born with, uh, the special abilities that you might have that distinguish you from, from other people uh, versus gifts. Now, these are spiritual gifts, it should be a capital S, in my opinion here, because we're talking about, well, they do in the amplification uh, phrase, special endowments given by the Holy Spirit, which implies what? You have to have the Holy Spirit to have spiritual gifts, to get spiritual gifts. Uh, maybe that's not uh, entirely obvious, but, but uh, it, to be born of the Spirit, born of above, that is uh, the, uh, step, the, uh, the milestone that um, we need to get past in order to have the Spirit working in us and uh, bring to us special talents, special abilities, capacities that we didn't have um, the, um, uh, from uh, our natural birth, but that these are imparted to us uh, from above, as was the Holy Spirit who born us again, uh, who bear us again. Um, and uh, it's by that spirit that these, these gifts will uh, manifest. Uh, so, uh, verse two, uh, it kind of backtracks here a little bit. You know that when you were pagans, you were led off after speechless idols. Okay, part of being a, 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 a pagan religion is to be caught up in idol worship. Uh, however, you were led off, whether by impulse or habit. In other words, saying you might have done this quite unthinkingly. Um, because it's just a matter of, uh, like most like many religions, it's a matter of ritual, which is a matter of routine, which is habitual, uh, things that we uh, get into as a pattern. Uh, we think of them as worshipful, uh, but really they're just uh, habits in many cases, just things that we do rotely. And that's what he's reflecting on here. So. You were caught up in paganism and you had your um, pagan worship uh, as a uh, um, uh, that you were practicing sort of impulsively or habitually. Verse three, now he shifts gears here. He, it, this is kind of juxtaposed in a way. It's a little bit rough uh, in the translation, but therefore I want you to know that no one 
speaking by uh, the power and influence of the Spirit, capital S, of God, the Holy Spirit, can say, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus, my Lord, except by the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. Say it and mean it, of course. And I think what he's getting here is he's setting up these two uh, parameters, these two very concrete, very solid, very formidable uh, parameters, uh, namely that uh, if you have the spirit of God, you're not gonna be saying uh, uh, blasphemous things against the, uh, the Lord, certainly not against, better not be saying against the Holy Spirit, and you certainly don't have the spirit. Um, but furthermore, you're going to see, you're going to recognize Jesus as Lord, and uh, the Amplified adds the word "my," so it's a personal experience uh, of the Holy Spirit uh, that um, uh, that again bears you again into new life, wherein you say, um, it, it, "Jesus is Lord." And uh, you say it as a matter of course, you say it as, as believing with a full, uh, uh, full faith and credit, <laughs> credibility behind it, full faith and credibility behind it, because that, you, know, you, you have a new life now. And this is the kind of expression that would come from that life. Okay. So it comes except by, you know, the only way it's going to come is by the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. So you gotta have the Holy Spirit in order to get into spiritual gifts. That's what I think he's saying here. Um, get away from the old idolatrous practices and into the new, the new life. Verse four, now this is where he gets into um, listing the gifts and uh, talking about them briefly. Um, expands through the chapter as we go. Uh, now, there are distinctive varieties of spiritual gifts, special abilities given by the grace and extraordinary power of the Holy Spirit operating in believers. This is how uh, they expanded the text to mean uh, the gifts are increased capacities or abilities uh, given by grace. Again, uh, these, these are gifts. Uh, they are not uh, something we earned. They're not something that we can uh, gin up within ourselves, um, but uh, they are, uh, by the grace of God, uh, additional capacities that we didn't have before. Uh, extraordinary power, as it says here, of the Holy Spirit operating in believers. Okay. So, but it is the same Spirit who grants them and empowers believers. So, same spirit, uh, a collection of gifts, uh, but it administered uh, to different believers in different capacities, to different degrees, shall we say, um, and uh, unlikely that you're gonna find any one particular believer who has all of the gifts operating. But um, that's by design. This is all, uh, to empower the body of Christ, the body of believers, people who are born again, to function as a body uh, with a capacity that extends beyond uh, anything that they would be doing if they were simply acting in the natural. The church is not a, a club or a social group uh, or anything of that order, but uh, a collection of believers born of the Spirit who have these increased capacities to work together, to harmonize and uh, to add um, synchrony and um, uh, a, a capacity greater than the sum of the parts. Um, so talking about them here. Uh, and there are distinctive varieties of ministries and services. But it is the same Lord, the one and only Lord, who is served. And there are distinctive ways of working to accomplish these things. But it is the same God, our one and only Lord, who produces all these things in all believers, inspiring, energizing, empowering, 
the believers. Um, but to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit, the spiritual illumination, spiritual ins inspiration, uh, the spiritual energizing, if you will, okay? And the enabling, the empowering of the Holy Spirit for the common good, okay? This is, uh, this is what you've been given as a gift. It's expected uh, that you'll exercise it. And when you do, the whole body is benefited and blessed. So here they come. Verse 8. To one is given through the Holy Spirit uh, the power to speak the message of wisdom. Okay, the message of wisdom. Wisdom a is a gift. First thing listed. Okay. Uh, to another, the uh, word of knowledge. Oops, here we go. All right, so we've got wisdom and knowledge uh, and understanding according to the same spirit. Sp same spirit's giving each of these gifts, of course, the Holy Spirit, uh, but is um, but they're, they're imparted differently to different believers uh, throughout the body. Okay, word of knowledge. Uh, word of knowledge and understanding, knowledge and understanding go together, okay, according to the same spirit. To another, wonder working faith by the same Holy Spirit. In other words, a worker of miracles, something that uh, goes beyond the natural, uh, can't explain it really in natural terms, something that, that supersedes uh, the natural, uh, because it is, after all, supernatural. So, Third gift, uh, many uh, of the other versions do list it as uh, miracles, the ability to work miracles. These can be all kinds of things too, okay? By the same spirit and another extraordinary, extraordinary gifts of healing. Uh, healings themselves could be considered a type of miracle in some instances. Uh, we have uh, instances of, of uh, reports of people who um, are diagnosed with one condition, they go into have treatment on it, and the doctors go looking for it, can't find it. They can't explain where it went. All the tests showed uh, this condition was there, but okay, gone now, all right? Uh, now, through what, uh, through what good prayer did, the, did that happen? Uh, and remember, Jesus himself intercedes for us too. So, uh, but healings by the one spirit. Uh, and to another, we're working of miracles, as we're just saying, uh, gifts of healing, miracles. To another, prophecy, foretelling the future, okay? Speaking uh, a new message from God to the people. Now, foretelling is a tricky word. We should point that out. It's, uh, this is not fortune telling. <laughs> that's, a that's a divination uh, of the occult. That's uh, not what we're talking about here, but we're saying, um, um, predicting future events uh, that uh, will um, that will be verified in time. Their, their purpose uh, is very much in lending credibility to prophets. Prophets prophesy. If they prophesy something that's going to happen and it comes to pass, uh, then we say, yeah, this this person may have. The, uh, the uh, maybe it may have a, a, a connection with the Lord of a divine nature, of a divine capacity, uh, and the the uh, the verification we find over and over in script in scripture, uh, many statements of prophets are preceded or anteceded by prophecy, and when that prophecy comes to pass, the statement that was meant to be conveyed by the prophet takes on a whole new credibility, uh, takes on a whole new level of impact. And, uh, and so for a profit to, uh, of, of profiting, profitizing, <laughs> prophesying, sorry, there's the word, prophesying is, um, is a matter of uh, when uh, through fulfillment um, is a way of adding uh, confirmation and credibility and veracity uh, to a prophet's overall message. Uh, and that's in fact why we have uh, <laughs> prophets. 
they did this very thing. Uh, to another, the, okay, uh, carrying on. So from prophecy, we go on to the discernment of spirits, um, the, to the ability to dis distinguish between, because this is important. It's not, uh, it's not a slam dunk as you might think, uh, because Satan is a master deceiver. And uh, as the scripture says, he masquerades as an angel of light. Okay, and he does things that, that he may be doing things that seem divine. He may even quote the word to you. Certainly did to Jesus uh, when he, uh, uh, right after his baptism, uh, started his ministry with the journey in the wilderness. Satan come at, came at him with the word of God, but not the context that God intended. Therefore, deceptive, therefore, evil. Uh, so discerning spirits. Very important gift of the spirit. Uh, you know, when we're talking about the Holy Spirit, it seems to me that for me, the number one um, trigger point is knowing, realizing, seeing, experiencing the spirit of agape. If we have that spirit of agape, if we are aware of it, if we're sensitive to it, uh, then uh, it's very likely we're in tune with the spirit. Uh, it is that spirit of self-sacrifice, giving of oneself, uh, expending oneself or one's resources uh, to uh, benefit others uh, without looking for a, uh, a, a particular return, uh, not uh, attaching any strings, so to speak. But um, that spirit of agape, is uh, to me a, a guiding light for me it's it's, it's what i look for uh, and when that's available when that's present then um i feel like i'm on the right track i feel like i'm uh, uh working with the working with the spirit and the spirit is working with me uh, so um so discernment okay and here the amplification of the amplified is the, the discernment of spirits is the ability to distinguish sound godly doctrine from the deceptive doctrine of man-made religions and cults from the evil one. Okay, so uh, ability to uh, distinguish in this context, uh, in this letter, this seems to be where the emphasis is. Uh, another spirit to another various kinds of unknown tongues. Okay, and of course, some of the, uh, the, the consummate example, I believe, is uh, in Acts uh, when uh, the apostles started speaking in languages of other peoples uh, that uh, who were visiting uh, Jerusalem at the time to hear uh, the word given to them in their own language. Uh, this was obviously a, a gift of the Holy Spirit and a miraculous one at that because the, the, the apostles were not um, disciples and apostles disciples at that point, I guess. I'm sorry, the, the apostles at that point um, weren't sent yet. So kind of on the borderline, I guess, <laughs> between disciple and, and apostle. But the point is that they, um, uh, they were able to put forth uh, these languages and they were not, students of the language at any point in their past. They may have heard a few words here and there, but to give out the entire uh, gospel uh, message uh, was a, a substantial move of the Spirit of God. Uh, this is in addition to the, the uh, languages of the angels, for instance, and uh, the, uh, that's, that's a, again, of course, another additional unknown language um, but uh, specific to uh, the divine. So uh, the tongues and the interpretation of tongues are gifts of the spirit to not only uh, be able to speak in these foreign languages, but also to interpret them, okay? Now, uh, of this list that started back there with wisdom, and ends here with the interpret with tongues and the interpretation of tongues. 
Um, some people will try to turn this into a hierarchy. I'm not, I'm not quite so, I'm not sure how valid that is, which is as if to say wisdom is more important uh, because it's listed first. Some people will say, well, <laughs> tongues is most important because uh, it's what the, uh, the crescendo of all of these uh, gifts leads to. Mm. So <laughs> I think the importance of the gifts are the ones that edify the body and that are spoken, that are uh, brought forth to uh, work together to unify the body. And in whatever order they come, that's what the body needs to work as a unit, um, to have that um, harmony and um, to um, work synergistically. That's the word I was trying to get to earlier, synergistically, to work together so that the output is actually greater than the sum of the parts. Uh, it's not just harmony, but it's, it's that added energy, that added output that uh, comes from the sum of the parts, uh, the, the whole of the body being greater than just the sum of the parts. Verse 11, Ooh. getting on here. Um, For just as the body is one and yet has many parts and all the parts though many form only one body. So it is with Christ. For by one Holy Spirit, we were all baptized into one body that is spiritually transformed and united together. Whether Jews or Greeks, Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Holy Spirit, since the same Holy Spirit fills each life. Okay, and that's it. So that's it. Now we go on from there. Uh, so, but for today, I think that's about all we're, we're going to deal with through verse 13. Um, and you might want to read this over. This is a, a very controversial uh, topic, uh, study area. Denominations are formed around these, uh, the various doctrines that come from studying this area and denominations divide over them. Uh, so uh, it's an important, uh, important study. Uh, the first thing you want to resolve, I think, is whether or not the gifts are for today. That's a big controversy in itself. Many people will say the gifts for, were for the time of the early church to get it started and established and get it underway. It was like starting fluid, if you will, uh, but um, they are not relevant today. Some, some churches will teach that. Others will get caught up in only the gifts um, uh, to the neglect of other uh, 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 doctrine. So um, it's, it's, a, um, it's a, a, a sensitive area that uh, we need to, to um, give special attention to. And we'll continue this study tomorrow. Uh, God willing, of course. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for, for bringing us your word and your spirit again, that we may grow by it and that we may uh, work by it and live by it, that we might uh, lead lives that glorify you. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Bye for now.